What's up everybody? How's it going? This video is going to be a little different than the other content on my channel, but hopefully you enjoy it. If you've spent any time at all watching software-related videos on YouTube, you've probably come across everybody's favorite ex-Google, ex-Facebook, 25-year-old CEO, Clement Mielescu. Now recently, Clement released a video in which he describes a technique that he claims is the fastest way to learn a new programming language. I thought it would be fun to try out that technique today. What's the technique? 1. Pick a new programming language. 2. Solve as many interview prep questions as you can in that language. And 3. Whenever you come across a concept that you don't understand, Google it. That's it. That's the whole technique. Now I'll be using AlgoExpert.io to solve this interview question because any parody of his channel wouldn't be complete without a low-key product plug. I'd also give you my own affiliate code for their platform, but I'm about 9,900 subscribers away from the 10k threshold, so go ahead and use his product code, CLEM, C -L -E -M, for a 15% discount on the platform. Also, you should totally subscribe to my channel so I can inch closer to that ultimate goal of one day becoming an Algo Expert affiliate. Now without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so here we are on the Algo Expert website. Scroll down, question, explore questions. See there's a hundred different questions on the site. To pick one of the free ones. Uh, I believe this is the one that Clement uh, completed in his video. I'm going to river sizes one step down, a little bit easier. And I'm going to use Swift as my language of choice. Uh, it's a language that Apple introduced in 2014 and is the primary language used for uh, programming iOS apps. I've never used it before, so it seems like a good one to learn. And let's get into it. Okay, so the problem is called river sizes. We're basically given an input array matrix, two dimensional, has ones and zeros, and we're trying to find all of the different regions made up of ones that are connected to each other. Uh, so in this case, this top left two would be a region. Uh, this L shape would be a region. And so we're trying to find all of those regions and count the size of them, and then return an array that includes all of those, but the order of those doesn't matter. So this is a problem that's similar to one that I've done before. So I think it should be relatively straightforward, but the devil's in the details, and so let's see how it goes. My general approach is going to be to walk through the input matrix uh, row by row, and each time I find a one, I'm going to explore outwards from there, like a first search, and try to find all of the ones that are connected to that initial starting point. And then I'm going to also keep track of every point in the matrix that I visited, such that when I reach a point that I've already touched uh, and counted in a, in a prior river, I don't recount that or double count that. So it looks like we can use a syntax here for name in names. And our input is a list of lists or an array of arrays of ints. So I'm just going to start by saying for row in matrix, curly braces. Print. So here, looks like my first test case is identical to this sample input. So I print it out. And then let's do for cell in row, I will print. Now we're going through the two dimensional array and printing out each cell along the way. So there's probably some way in this for loop syntax to get out the index as well. Like I can use this uh, list dot enumerated, kind of like in Python. Okay, so now I'm printing the row, the column, and the cell. So the whole thing is program. The solution is this function river sizes. I'm assuming I can add another method here. That's just something like Okay, so by defining another function here, I was able to just call it from within my river sizes function. So each time I get 
a river size, I'm going to push it into this list. Uh, however, we do that in Swift. And then at the end, once I've gone through the full matrix, uh, I'll just return that and it should have all of the values that we care about. So the other helper function that I'm going to need, whenever I have a starting point, I'm going to want to explore all of the orthogonal directions, uh, east, west, north, south, from there to see if my river can be expanded. So uh, get neighbors, I'll call it. Okay, I've cleared up a bunch of those syntax errors. Basically what I was doing incorrectly was declaring the types of all these variables. So for example, this river size output is going to be a list of integers. So I was, I was not declaring the type uh, within there. And then also my outputs weren't always matching. So for example, I had said this was going to output uh, a list of lists of ints. And unless this matched that type, it was explaining. Uh, I also needed to name all of my variables and provide a type in the function. As I walk through the list with these nested for loops, I want to mark off the fact that I've been to a certain place. Okay, so now we see as our for loops progress, we start to replace those ones and zeros with negative ones. So now later when we're checking things to see if a value is non-positive, then we know we've already visited it. Uh, uh, so basically I'm just testing that concept of if I set a value within that cell, will that be visible outside the scope of the function? My queue is going to be a set of 2D elements telling me which points I still need to visit in exploring this particular river. So effectively this tries to move up one and we find a cell equal to one. That means our river can continue in that direction. Uh, and so we are going to end it to our queue. Uh, we now just need to do that in the other three directions. So I'm outputting a bunch of extra. Oh, OK. So the reason for that is that this is getting updated inside of that method, but that's not propagating back out. Now, find river size is going to take not only, it's going to return not only the size of that river, also going to return the new updated track where I've been. Hey, test case one. Okay, so we're getting somewhere. We have started passing some of the test cases, but we see, and the doorbell just rang, so I'm gonna go get that. So it looks like our output is close to being right, but there's an off by one, one of the river sizes. Uh, in this test case, as well as, whoa, this test case. So my guess is that it's something similar to before where we're not getting the updated tracker values, due to how we're passing it. Boom. One, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so now all of our test cases are passing. Our solution ended up being a little clunky because we had that 
visit tracker object that kept having to be passed down into all of the, the different functions. Overall, happy with this uh, solution. Figured out how to use for loops, while loops, declare variables of different types, both constants and variables. Had to adjust defining all of these types and function signatures up front, which is something that you don't necessarily always have to do in Python or JavaScript, which I'm more familiar with. While I'm still a beginner at Swift, I do think this is a high efficiency approach for learning a new language, but I think that after a few more interview problems, I would likely transition to more project-based learning and build an iOS app or some other type of application. Also, Clement, if you're out there watching, and everybody can do me a favor by hitting the like button so that the YouTube algorithm knows to show it to him. First off, hi, I love your content, and I hope that you interpret my imitation as flattery, or at least find it somewhat amusing. And with that, here are some bloopers of me playing 52 card pickup with myself. What's up everybody, how's it going? Mm -hmm.